Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So today I'm going to talk to you about something I think that's rather important. Basically, I'm going to tell you how I kind of manage risk when it comes to the different types of trading. Uh, talking about intraday trading, so your day trading, your swing trading, and then obviously your investing. Uh, so I put them in basically those three categories. So there's short-term swing trades and long-term swing trades as well. And then there's obviously leveraged positions. You're like, Kenny, why do you do all this stuff? Well, one, I'm generally agnostic to how I capture alpha in the market. But two, I don't think you should limit yourself uh, to the weapons in your arsenal. Sometimes you just need a dang bow, you know, and sometimes you need a sword. Uh, so that said, I will just go over a couple trades that I went uh, over in the last couple of days that have been very successful and just why I took those trades and just show you how being generally agnostic to uh, your mechanic or the way you do it uh, can help you and give you more opportunities. That said, I understand that some of you are very focused on being very specific and very uh, surgically precise on one strategy, and that is absolutely fine. You should learn how to do one or two first, um, but uh, I'm the kind of person who likes to learn it all at once. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get into it. This first trade is SOS, okay? So uh, basically using my network, uh, not just the, the folks, you know, my personal uh, friends and stuff too always give me uh, interesting plays too, but they generally think about uh, trading and everything in the same way as I do. So SOS was is a basically um, uh, another Bitcoin mining um, uh, play, but it's a Chinese company. Um, that said, it got a short sell report that uh, attacked it right here, as you can see um, on this day, and it uh, drove the price down about um 40%. <laughs> so, uh given that, let me tell you that uh it was a Hindenburg report and um Hindenburg reports are pretty good. Uh I mean the Nikola one was good. Some some of them are bad. Uh the KNDI one I thought was uh pretty on on on, on target as well. Um uh, but here's the thing, whether you like it or not or whether you believe the report or not has nothing to do with the function of uh, an overreaction. So with this overreaction, you know, you saw that e-hang too. Um, and I don't even know where they're at right now, but there was absolutely a recovery bounce too. It's almost guaranteed this year that every time a short seller attacks something, there was a recovery bounce. So I waited for the flush. And as soon as the flush happened, I saw the, the turnaround. Uh, right here and then I got in and you know we wrote it up and we got about a 40 percent uh, trade I didn't get the second day like it's up it was up 88 percent I didn't get 88 percent I definitely closed out um, uh, at 40 percent I think it opened right here my I must have not gotten the bottom because I know I got I captured 40 percent of the move uh, so I might have gotten up here um, and so you say, Kenny, how would I know that? Well, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about anomaly or signal detection, right? This is a signal within the noise. Like it's something that you can set up fairly easily. Um, and if you back test it and you're confident enough, um, you shouldn't be scared. I mean, it's like a 10 out of, it's been like 10 out of 10 this year for Hindenburg. You know, you can go back and look at all the stocks that they, should, <laughs> that they put reports on, you know, in general, if you see a bleed or a big sell off like this, that, that drops the stock, uh, far below uh, where it started on the day. Um, there's just no other place it can go. I mean, there, it hits capitulation and then there's a bounce, right? Um, is it still risky? Yeah, of course. Of course, it could be a complete failure. It can be a complete dud, but you manage your risk. So even if I get nine out of 10 of those trades, I'm happy, right? Uh, so the risk to reward is worth it. Um, so for this, though, let's talk about some other ways you can think about this, right? Um, and then we'll go out macro and zoom out and talk about some of the other things I'm thinking about. But if you look at here, right, this is the 50 SMA, okay? So this is important because this will help you trade uh, on a lot of things, right? So if you look at this, the 50 SMA, right, if you say we buy every time um, it crosses over or whatever and we try to hold or whatever, you can see that here it didn't really work and here it didn't really work, right? So this is saying for like a week uh, a week trade. What I'm suggesting this is like, well, what, uh, a week right here, right? This capture right here. Um, so if, if you got in on here, you would have had a you would have been stopped out here, which is not terrible, uh, and you would have been. Uh, but you know, how do you get it to capture this much? And that's the and that's the key, right? So what do you need to do? I mean, you just have to turn. You have. I mean, you simply just have to find what works for each stock. And somebody like commented on it. I don't know if they were trolling or whatever. They were like, you know, can you you know, um, can you elucidate? <laughs> 
weird word to use, uh, like like what you mean by every stock is different. Every stock is absolutely different. You know, there's volatility, volume, uh, so many different key factors. And it's actually very freaking complicated. Um, I'm not going to get mad at people who try to like think or like if you could put that one framework against every stock, if you could do it so perfectly, then it the market would be solved. And that's the point. The point is the way to solve the market is when you find uh, when you find a way to predict price movement, uh, when you find channels that are respected by the channels, like the top end of the channel and the bottom end of the channel, use it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So this, you would say that this 50, excuse me, this 50 simple moving average is not conducive to trading this. So what could you do? You know, um, you could use a different line. Um, and so, um, Instead of using 50, we could try 55, which is typically uh, a more perfect line for that. And we still cut short, right? And so, you know, these are people trying to to, to probably, you know, I don't want to say front load you, but I mean, you definitely would have got shaken out here on open. So let's try something else, right? Let's try 60. And that still doesn't work. Um, but my point is, you know, and you're like, oh man, now you're using uh, in, <laughs> in sample data. Yeah, you have to. It has to, you have to use uh, you have to use um, lagging indicators. How else do you do it? But see, now if we get to 75, so now if you use a 75 simple moving average, you know, and you probably want to use, you know, it might even be just the EMA that works better, right? But now if you you're following this chart and you know you use the hey you cross over or whatever like that. Uh, uh, you get a cross over here, you know, you pick up the position here and you come out here and now we get um, <laughs> 182%, right? As you fall back under the the, S, uh, the the SMA, right? And then and then you say, okay, you know, we use it here. It fails twice, whatever. You get stopped out. You, I mean, with 108% gain, you've done pretty well. But here's my point. You get it here too, right? Uh, you would still be generally agnostic, not agnostic. You'd be generally on the sidelines for this and then you'd pop here and then we'd get what another 20%, right? Uh, my point is, you know, find the trigger, find the line, find the mechanism that works for each particular stock, right? You could do something else. You could use a channel. You could probably, um, some people are going to love trends, you know, they're going to switch to logarithmic and then they're going to, you know, draw a trend line and they're going to say, I want the bounce. But see, this is what I mean for this trend line. Boom, boom. Uh, fails here. You could have put a short position, right? Because you're failing off the trend line, right? So trend bounce, 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 fail, go short, come down here. I don't know. What's your exit strategy here, though? So my point is, you know, you can create a strategy for every, every stock. And you need to. You can't be just, you can't just be, <laughs> you can't just be boneheaded about the way that each stock moves. Because each stock has so many different factors and so many different, uh, just variables that it's impossible to capture, right? Then that's why sometimes your gut instinct works better, which is, I know it sounds silly as hell coming from somebody who's like very quantitatively driven. Um, but the problem is like, uh, there's so many underlying variables that can definitely uh, change the nature of which, uh, on how a stock is traded or whatever. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, and I'll kind of just take this, um, when it comes to trading, Time frames are very important, and I think I've talked about this before. But um, you know, there's there's the the short intraday day trader right here, right, uh, and then there's the um, uh, the swing trader, right, and then there's the investor. Okay, um, this is this is hard as hell, but people start that first, right? It's it's super hard, even to this day. Like, um, it's to me, it's it's not worth doing unless I'm very 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 sure. Um, the second one, um, swing trading is absolutely feasible and doable. Like I've back tested it and it's pretty, pretty, uh, uh, <laughs> pretty profitable. Uh, and the funny thing is I still lean towards a 90% or better on my swing trades if to be, to be happy with it. But I know for a fact, uh, from my back testing that the, the strategies that are like 60% ish are the sweet spot. Um, but the problem with those 60% um, uh, kind of um, strategies is it looks like this going up, okay? And with my 90% strategy, it looks generally like this, right? <laughs> 
And so it really is just a mental game. If you can get through the mental block and play your 60% game, that's actually uh, going to be faster capture mechanic. And so investing um, is an interesting one too. Um, that is all fundamental analysis, but that's usually, it should be absolutely 100%, right? You should never lose money investing. You should always hold like a rock. OK, especially if you're not getting ready to retire and you don't need the money, you should hold, hold, hold. Right. Uh, and so before I leave you with uh, with that, um, I do want to go over one other thing. So we were in the innovation lab and I'm not going to show the whole thing because I only like I mean, I, I, I want to reward folks who are in the lab putting in the work. But I do want to show off um, just kind of um, uh, one thing here. Where to go? Where to go, folks? Is it on here? OK, here it is. Um, so this is just a back test of a performance of a strategy that I showed off, right? Uh, and it's a really simple strategy, but this is Facebook over the last five years using the strategy, uh, with the flow chart that we have, um, and the framework given here, uh, you would, you would have eight occurrences in the last five years for Facebook, but given that the strategy returns, uh, an alpha of uh, whatever over the whole baseline, right? Uh, there's definitely alpha here because if you held, you had 234%. Here the, here the strategy returns 314. In fact, if you make two little small modifications to the strategy, it gets over 450%. So my point is um, there's easy, simple strategies you can devise for yourself that can definitely capture alpha. Um, it's not impossible. It's not that hard. You're probably complicating it um, well, I won't say it's not that hard, but it's not it's not like rocket science, you know? It's it's you put some time, put some pen, put some back testing to it, and the key is to really just hold. And that's why time is on your side. And that's why I say day trading is super super hard. It's a risk management game. It's a it's a roller coaster. Uh and in fact, there's so many variables that uh I think are uh, well, not variables. There's so many different kind of, uh, I guess, straw man concepts in day trading that make me laugh sometimes. If you watch some of these momentum traders that they do live and stuff, I can. Uh, and in fact, actually, you know what? I won't. I won't talk about it today, but I'll do a video about it. It's it's kind of funny, and if you think about it logically, when I when I show you what I'm talking about, uh, you'll probably laugh because um, you'll be like, yeah, <laughs> seriously. Um, but, you know, on the surface, it logically looks really, really fundamentally sound. And I'm not trying to talk to you out of a day trade. I mean, I took a trade uh, with Real Network. I don't know if you all know where Real Network is. It's this one uh, today for 13%. Um, so, and you're like, dang, Kenny, this thing has no volume. What? How did you know to trade it or why did you even trade it, right? Um, so there's um, some of the folks I follow basically put out a – put out a, a signal in the noise uh, for uh, for this stock. But here's the thing. It's the same thing as Motley Fool or any of those other uh, other kind of uh, stock picking places. I don't, you know, they're going to tell their friends first and then the price is going to skyrocket. Don't, don't ever buy there. Like just wait, right? Um, so, you know, we, already, we always talk about it here. You know, if you read uh, kind of all the white papers that I'm reading and kind of do your own back testing. You know sentiment to decay is about four days. So here's one day, here's two days, three days. And the reason I got in here is, you know, this is day four and, you know, uh, three and four days, pretty decent, right? But I felt like it was, a, it was a good spot anyways. And the fundamental analysis on real network is very, very, very strong right now. Uh, and so with that, given that, you know, I, I saw the flush and open and then we took the trade and uh, I mean, we made... We were highly leveraged, which is why I got out already. We made six, uh, sixteen percent if it was a raw trade, but I mean I was highly leveraged in a in a very uh, very interesting position. So so I made I mean I mean I made almost you know probably I don't know more than fifty percent for sure. Um, so what is a, what was I getting at with this? Okay, so yeah, no, does it have room to grow? And is this a fundamentally good so stock? Yes, this is actually something I would have been willing to hold. So. I would have been willing to hold this position for weeks. If I was wrong, I would have been fine. It would have been just a long swing trade down here and then I would have got out somewhere over here, right? So that's what my point is when it comes to like time, right? So these swing trades, uh, you know, even if you're wrong here, you can get it. But if it was just a day trade and I wasn't willing to hold it, right? So I already know this is a good stock, so I'm going to hold it anyways if I am wrong. But if I get there, what's the point of staying here if, if you know, 
you got the trade that you wanted. You know, 40% in one day. Some people get 8% in a whole year. Just remember that. Don't be, <laughs> don't be greedy. If you get 50% in one day, you're fine. You know, you don't need, <laughs> you don't need to do any more. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't really have any other point to make except for that. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wish I would have had a better clean exit on this uh, video, but I think this is an interesting video. I'd like to hear your comments on it. I know obviously there's particulars here that are probably confusing and there's a bunch of things that uh, could probably take and, and, and be elaborated on, but I think in general, uh, you get the point of what I'm saying. Basically, let me recap. You know, short trades, very, very hard. You know, I don't mind doing day trades, but have a backup plan and a risk management plan and strategy. Or you just do R1, R2, which I fucking hate, right? I like being 100% right. Uh, um, you have to protect your money uh, at all costs. And I think capital preservation is so important. And when you're younger, you can do a lot of YOLOing, but you don't need to, is my point. I mean, like, you want to be a millionaire in like five years or 10 years. What if I can say you can be a guaranteed millionaire in 10 years? Then what, and isn't that better than trying to just YOLO and like missing out and maybe like, you know, uh, blowing out your account six, seven, eight times and just never getting there. Uh, yeah, you might be able to get it the first time, but I mean, go ahead, roll the dice one through six, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Anyways, uh, that's it. No admin notes for today. Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, um, we're going to have to do some uh, <laughs> financial stock stuff uh, soon, not stock stuff, uh, fi uh, due diligence, breakdowns, fundamental analysis pretty soon because search engine, guys, search engine. But I did find something really interesting today that I want to share with you probably next episode, I'll, and I'll show you next episode. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.